Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome to Elite Dangerous Beyond. And another episode of Reboot and Restart. The series where I start Elite Dangerous again with a Steam account. And go and revisit all the old haunts. Now that the Beyond Season 1 is with us. And that the game has evolved. To a point where it's completely different from when I did all this the first time round. As you can see, I'm bombing around in my... Cobra Mark III, I've gone totally old school, and I'm enjoying every minute with this ship. Now, Farseer Inc. in the Decate system is one of the first engineers you're potentially going to unlock. Now, unlocking this engineer has certain requirements. Now, for those of you who don't know, Felicity Farseer is the engineer to go to to engineer your frameshift drive, amongst other items as well, but it's mainly frameshift drives. And you gain exploration rank, scout, and you'll get that invitation. Get her a unit of meta alloys, and you're in business. Now, if you haven't already done so, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button, and then look for the notification icon and ring that notification bell. And that'll let you know when I'm putting more videos like this, of Elite Dangerous, other games, just Sea of Thieves and the like, on YouTube. Now as I mentioned to build reputation with this engineer, it's a good idea that all that cartographic or space data, scanning data you've been honking that horn left, right and center you use and cash in at Farseer Inc. in the Decade system and that will help to build your reputation. But let's get into it. So one of the first things you need to do is get yourself some meta alloys and you can find those from the barnacle sites which are well documented on the internet. Type in Thargoid barnacle sites into Google or your browser of choice and you'll come up with a host of solutions that have been put in by the player community. But if you haven't, then there's something written on the screen that will also be put into the comments. Now some barnacle sites are ripe, some barnacle sites are not. It's the right ones that contain the meta alloys and other rare materials. Now, in addition to this, you're going to need atypical disrupted wake echoes. And they're basically found by scanning ships and the like. You're going to need phosphorus and strange wake solutions. Again, scanning ships and doing mining is going to find you this. Manganese, chemical distilleries, eccentric hyperspace trajectories. By that, you're going to need a hyperspace scanner and also arsenic, chemical manipulators, data mind wake exceptions. And those are generally what you need for the extended range blueprints to give that FSD of your ship that added bit of boost. Now, don't be surprised that when you're at these little barnacle sites and you're mining away that you don't get a visit from some old friends. Yes, you'll get visited by Thargoids who will come down, scan the area, make a right old mess and if you're in the way, lift your SRV into the air. But it's quite a sight and it's a fantastic looking set piece. Now, once you've collected all that stuff, you've got your meta alloys, you can make your way over to the Decade system and Farseer Inc., the home of Felicity Farseer. Once you're there, you're docked, dump that cartographic data and gain a little bit of reputation. It's not going to hurt. You can repair, you can refuel, but don't go looking for a wide range of stuff to buy in the outfitting section. Generally with the engineers, it's all down to what these guys can actually specialize for you, what they can modify for you. That's generally what they stock. Donate that ton of meta alloys and that gives you grade one access. And then following the blueprints and the recipes, should we say, of what it provides you and from what you've mined from those sites, then you can get, I think, at least to a grade three FSD on jump range with very little hassle. And now what you've got is you've got the new engineering section. How you engineer, right, has drastically changed from previous versions that you've had in the game. Now you can generally see that what you do 
makes an improvement without jumping back and forth between different screens of your ship. I used to sit there engineering things up for my ships, especially for my Imperial Cutter, and I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing was making an improvement. Sometimes it wouldn't. It would be a decrease. Also generating modifications. That's changed. Now, now the old Wheel of Fortune has gone, or the Wheel of Misfortune, as some would say, and the ability to generate a modification depends on additional items that you have. Now, you may not have enough of these, so it's probably worthwhile getting on the internet and having a good look. But generally, I've already detailed what you need to get things done in this video. But I'll also pop it into the comment section as well. So, when you're just starting out in the game, you're more than likely, unless you've been a prolific miner, um, you're going to start out with... Gaining access to Grade 1, 2 and 3. If you're lucky, perhaps even Grade 4. But 1, 2 and 3 is generally what you're going to have. And that's going to be able to boost your Cobra, or equivalent looking ship, up to around about 26 or 27 light years jump range. And that makes a hell of a difference. And if you imagine you'd use an Asp Explorer here, that's pretty, got a pretty good jump range, you can really make a killing and start bombing around the Elite Galaxy like nobody's business. Now, be very careful. There seems to be some sort of glitch or what have you in the engineering section. You have to keep going back and selecting the modification that you want. It doesn't just stay with you. So, for example, if I click on frame shift drive range, yes, great, I complete that, say OK. It goes back to fastest FSD boot sequence. Now, if you modify that on top of your jump drive range, you're more than likely, or you will, right, negate the jump jump range effect that you've applied to your ship. And that's going to really spoil your day, if you know what I mean. Now, good old Felicity can modify not only frameshift drives, but detailed surface scanners, frameshift drive interdictors, and power plants. In addition to this... She can also upgrade sensors, shield boosters, and thrusters. But her speciality is the frame shift drive, and you can engineer that right up to level 5. Whereas things like shield boosters, level 3, power plant, level 1, it depends. You know, there is, there's a tiered system that she operates, and other engineers have other specialities as well. In essence, I found this new engineering experience to be a good experience, much better than the old one. I knew exactly what I was doing, even though the interface had changed. I knew that what I was doing was making a difference. It was increasing as it would do. Why would you want to go to an engineer, take potluck, right? And then not have the desired effect after departing all your hard earned minerals. Well, you wouldn't, would you? And there you go. Now the decade system is in a decent system of Federation space. Government's democracy, population 31.74 million, and it's an industrial refinery. So if you're going to transport stuff into some of the many outposts and stations that are in the system, be aware that you're going to need items that are wanted by the refinery and industrial section. So look for things like foodstuffs that sort of thing and then you could beat an extra bit of money there which every little's going to help eh every little's going to help i also found the fact that looking for the recipes or the stuff that was acquired for upgrading my different components was easier to follow and the ability to pin that blueprint even though it has been around since the engineer's inception um, is an added bonus. So don't just go there and think, all right, I'm going to go and upgrade my frameshift drive, spend a bit of time at the resource sites, mining materials, scanning ships, spend the time, fill up that additional data buffer that Frontier have so generously given us, um, and material storage, just to ensure that you go in there fully loaded and it's not going to be a wasted trip because it is a little bit out of the way, I have to say. You know, um, you are going to have to do a little bit of jumping 
And in fact, in my Cobra, it was a good old 20 jumps from where I was to where I had to be to get to first hearing. So that concludes this episode of Restart and Reboot and Felicity Fars here. Get yourself to scout with the Federation. Do a good couple of missions. Get yourself some meta alloys. Get yourself then over to the Decade system, remembering to mine on the way and start scanning ships around nav beacons and stations and the like. And then you'd be able to upgrade some of your systems and get that lovely jump range that everyone so much seeks after. It'd be interesting to know that if you're still with me in the comment section, is it only jump range you're looking for from Felicity? Or do you have a faster jump speed and the like? Let me know. Put in the comments. I've been Ricardo. Thanks very much for watching. This has been Elite Dangerous Beyond and the Restart and Reboot section. Fly safe and look out for more episodes of Restart and Reboot. Reboot and Restart on a Saturday, 6 o'clock, British Standard Time. See you soon.